I now call upon Councillor Cook to move and Councillor Lockett to second. The motion on ones with challenge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. May I uh, formally move this motion and, uh, and uh, start by, uh, by quoting a, a former local resident of ours, a um, quote which some people may recognise, that the gentleman in Whitehall really does know better what is good for people uh, than the people know themselves. Uh, Labour Minister, no surprise there. Um, and uh, the MP for Battersea North, uh, Douglas Jay. So how wonderfully uh, appropriate that uh, we now here in Wandsworth, Wandsworth Council have the opportunity of uh, demonstrating uh, the opposite uh, is the case. The Wandsworth Challenge uh, is all about prompting a rethink about the role of government and its relationship with communities. It questions how and why we do things, and it asks if others can do them better. If a community is better placed in the council, then it should be the most natural thing in the world that people come together and shape and help define their community and their services. We already see a resurgence in the sense of place, be it growing numbers of street parties or the rather loud raspberry that was delivered to a certain supermarket that thought that it knew better than the residents of Battersea uh, where they actually lived, or the Ballam Food Festival uh, running now, which is possible only because of the proliferation of independent retailers who, who make such a huge contribution uh, to uh, that place's distinct identity. And we've already heard from my colleagues this evening uh, about uh, the importance of business in, in, uh, in, uh, in stimulating the economy of the borough. Over several decades, central government has usurped so much power and influence from the natural role of communities and families, culminating in the uh, box-ticking mania of the last government. And it is now time for a change of course, a journey that in many respects Wandsworth uh, has already begun. This, of course, is one of the central messages in this week's white paper. It poses several questions. Among them, perhaps foremost, uh, what is the role of the state? Should it have monopolies? Uh, in some cases, yes, of course. But in many areas, there's no reason why this should be so. Uh, an example is our recent move to test the emerging market for library provision, exploring new ways of delivering the service that will enhance the experience of our residents and align more closely to their particular needs and preferences. We already have some very positive new dialogues uh, happening uh, as under that heading. But this won't always be easy, and we've touched on that already this evening. We'll have to learn to step back sometimes, recognize our own limits, and trust people to do more on their own terms. Uh, equally, communities will have to take greater responsibility in many cases. If, for example, a community group have done a magnificent job of developing a festival over the last 10 years, and now run an event attracting thousands of people with dozens and dozens of stalls, uh, then perhaps it is only reasonable that they should accept that a diminishing uh, council, council grant uh, will flow from that success. Indeed, one might argue it should be an aspiration. How, how much better for an event to be self-sustaining rather than depending on town hall handout? We would rather concentrate our finite funds on doing whatever we can to encourage and enable new initiatives to flourish and for them to turn, stand on their own two feet than simply create or reinforce more dependencies. The first round of the big society grants have seen successes for several organizations, and we hope that they will grow and thrive independent of the council. We're also launching an exploratory process with our art service. Perhaps the outcome will be different than for libraries, but the point is that we're looking at all options and asking ourselves and our partners some fundamental questions about who is play best placed to deliver a service. Council, for instance, doesn't run food retailing in the borough. Never heard any suggestion that it should, um, though I'm sure we can all agree on the importance of food. Many of us attended Monday's environmental policy briefing. It's already been mentioned. And we celebrate biodiversity as an article of faith. Uh, it's, it's automatically regarded as a good thing. I, I, I would very much agree with that. Uh, the ecological arguments for diversity revolve mainly around the strength that comes from variety. Well, surely exactly the same argument can be made about educational provision where our support of free schools aims to create more diversity and choice for parents. Rather than everybody achieving the same, it's about everybody achieving their potential, whatever that may be, in the manner that best suits them. In housing, we aim to create new home ownership opportunities. Again, they've already been touched on. While increasing our accountability to our tenants and leaseholders in an initiative that few councils could even contemplate. All of this will lead in time to a change and some, sometimes reduced role for the council. Uh, and we shouldn't be uncomfortable with that. This council is reshaping its structures and integrating many of its services. This has become a financial necessity uh, because of the appalling financial legacy of the pre previous government uh, and the party opposite of all... 
the party opposite have already accused us of it being bad being cuts. And, and, and it's true, to quote Anne Rand, you can avoid reality, but you can't avoid the consequences of avoiding reality. It's weird, isn't it? She could almost have had, had the, the last Labour government in mind. Um, and and just, just as often the case, there can be opportunity in, in adversity and chance to look at things anew and how That's things are done. Cook, you're stronger. But this is about much, much more. Five seconds, uh, Madam, uh, Mr. Mayor. But this is about much, much more than immediate financial priorities, urgent though they are. Uh, rather, we propose a set of principles for Wandsworth, as defined in this motion, that helps shape our activities and gives a coherent frame of reference as we move forward. That, Mr. Mayor, is the Wandsworth challenge. Thank you. Councillor Locker. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, may I second the motion? Um, in debating the motion this evening, I would like to discuss the specific potential for us to review and improve the service experience that we provide to local residents. From my professional experience working in marketing, I know how the success of an organisation is to a significant extent judged by how easy they are to do business with. And this is irrespective of whether or not they are public or private sector. I'm sure we can all think of examples where we have interacted with businesses or institutions and found them to be a pleasure to deal with. Similarly, I'm sure we can all think of examples which have been a nightmare. The challenge for Wandsworth Council is to ensure that we are at the top end of that customer service scale. We already have a strong reputation for service here in Wandsworth, consistently topping local authority satisfaction surveys. Indeed, many of you may have read the set with some amusement the recent Melissa Kite spectator column praising the service that she received from Wandsworth staff when querying a PCN, not least because of the contrast in treatment to what she was used to in neighbouring Lambeth. I'm sure we would all like to recognise Mr. Josh Jeffrey for his professionalism in handling Ms. Kite's case. Indeed, can there be any higher accolade to outstanding customer service than a journalist declaring love for you in a national publication. <laughs> Our challenge will be to build upon that excellent track record for service in a world where people's requirements and expectations are constantly evolving. We have to recognize that the traditional ways of interacting with residents will need to be augmented, reflecting the changes in the way people live and work. Looking at the way that we utilize technology will be a critical part of meeting this challenge. So too will be the concepts of convenience and self-service. After all, we now live in an age where an airline passenger can check in online and print their own boarding pass before leaving home. Something for us to bear in mind as we review the way that we do business with local residents. I am glad to say that this council has already shown that it is willing and able to develop new solutions to offer residents greater convenience and service. For example, the Park Mobile scheme has proved tremendously popular, leaving residents free from the hassle of hunting round for loose change, whilst at the same time enabling the council to reduce the operational costs of the ticket machine network. This scheme illustrates that it is perfectly possible for us to find ways of being more efficient and not just maintain a service, but actually improve it. It is precisely the kind of innovation I would like to see more of as part of the Wandsworth Challenge. There are many benefits for both residents and the council if we can offer more opportunities to do business based on a self-service model utilizing available technology. It will empower residents, providing greater choice and convenience. We can reduce bureaucracy, multiple handling, and the associated costs. We could offer greater flexibility, such as enabling more electronic and direct debit payments for council services. Fundamentally, we will be able to learn more about our residents and what services they want to see from their council. For some of our residents, there will remain a preference for the traditional methods of conducting business with the council. Some services are simply not appropriate to be transferred to the latest technology but I am confident that these cases are relatively few and manageable. Nor do they detract from the overall goals of the ones with challenge. Empowering our residents, giving them the chance to lead our relationship 
rather than the council dictating the terms of service. So, Madam Mayor, I urge all of my colleagues to join with me in supporting the motion. Let's take up the ones with challenge with the aim of ensuring that the council services lead the way in terms of their flexibility, convenience and user friendliness. Thank you. Councillor Daly. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. When the Conservative group requested that they have seven speakers uh, on the Wandsworth Challenge this evening, uh, we declined the offer to match them. Not because we don't wish to debate the issue of the day that the majority party deems to be of most importance, but because the papers we've seen so far on the Wandsworth Challenge come through our committees are long on rhetoric and incredibly short on substance. Sadly, having listened to two speeches from the Deputy Leader and Councillor Locker this evening, I personally, and I imagine most of my colleagues here, are still none the wiser as to what the Wandsworth Challenge will mean for our boroughs residents in practice. While we gladly endorse the five broad themes outlined in paragraph B of the motion, there's plenty of apple, uh, motherhood and apple pie there, we struggle to see the connection with this set of aspirations and the actions of the Council over the past eight months since the Wandsworth Challenge was first set. As the motion makes quite clear, a key element of the Wandsworth Challenge is to find new ways to engage and empower local communities. Yet over the last year, we have seen the Council moving in reverse when it comes to listening and engaging with its residents. During the recent consultation on the retendering of the waste management and street cleaning contract, the council elected to canvas residents' views exclusively online, excluding the significant proportion of residents who do not have access to the internet and who are either not aware of or not comfortable using library resources. This is how the council listens to residents when it comes to making important changes to the quality of services that residents will receive across the borough. If response rates are poor, the changes go ahead nonetheless. Yet when it comes to making alterations which residents have requested themselves, such as changes to traffic management or parking regulations, the council has decided to increase the response rate required from any consultation, making it harder than ever before for residents to engage with the council on issues that are important to them. The York Gardens Library project has also been heralded a big success in terms of the council listening to its residents. Yet this is a cynical presentation of the reality in our view. Having been presented with the choice of having a value community facility closed down altogether or kept open by volunteers, residents naturally went for the latter option. What residents in Latchmere would actually have preferred was that the council considered cutting back facilities at the Northcote Library, perhaps, which sits in a much more affluent part of the borough, where residents are not as reliant on the community's facili community facilities as they are at York Gardens. It's a shame that it took a great deal of national media attention to encourage the council to retreat from its plans to close the facility altogether. Uh, that apparently is listening to residents. It was a similar story with the Battersea Park Adventure Playground, where it was only after a legal challenge that the council issued a press release saying that it had listened to residents and elected to suspend its plan to, chain, to charge local children to use a playground. The timing was interesting on that one too, with the announcement arriving on the eve of a by-election and only a matter of hours after a hustings in Thamesfield, which many local Conservatives conceded was an embarrassment for their party and their candidate. Well, what of the Bolingbroke Hospital? Was that another great example of listening to residents? In Northcote Ward, maybe, but not in Tooting or Putney, where the parents of children who attend Elliot and Graveney schools were left wondering why the council could not afford to spend any money upgrading these schools' tired facilities, but could find £13 million to invest in a new secondary school elsewhere in the borough, for which there is no need for at least six more years. Madam Mayor, Councillor Cook and Councillor Locker's motion exposes the Wandsworth challenge for what it really is, an excuse for providing the residents of this borough with ever less for their council tax, dressed up as a big idea. The Labour group wholeheartedly supports the challenge to deliver services in a more efficient way and the ambition to create stronger, more engaged communities within our borough. But closing down community hubs such as libraries, daycare centres and youth clubs, and stripping out professional staff from those facilities that remain. You haven't closed the Tooting Base? We haven't closed the library. You haven't closed Tooting Base? You've cut them off. The Such as libraries, daycare centres and youth clubs. Members, members. And stripping out the professional staff from those facilities that remain, which I think is exactly what you've done in York Gardens, will have precisely the opposite effect. 